So we have three scenarios here, and we see that, um, let's start, we'll start with this, this scenario over here. And we see that, uh, suppose we have, well, suppose we have a, a indicator that can only retain in the plasma. Then you can see, and it does not, it, uh, if we inject, uh, if you inject yourself with a f uh, some a fluid and with an indicator and it, and it cannot leak out into the interstitial fluid or the intracellular fluid, we'll see that we can measure the compartment of in the plasma. And similarly, if we uh, see that if an uh, indicator uh, leaks out into the, from the plasma, we inject it into our blood, uh, blood vessel and it leaks out into the interstitial fluid, then we can measure our extracellular fluid because plasma plus interstitial fluid equals extracellular fluid. And similarly, if it leaks down from your blood vessel all the way down into your inside your cells, then that's your total body of water. That's your total uh, body fluids. And, and then we could um, calculate that um, by using mass balance. So let's give an example. Let's just talk about it a little bit more. So for example, Evans Blue is a dye that attaches, uh, that uh, has a high affinity for blood uh, or serum albumin. And so albumin is a big protein. And well, we talked about how the capillaries uh, allow for open uh, for uh, you know open uh, communication with the interstitial fluid. It it's not these ho these holes are not a lot large enough for um, not large enough for the albumin to get come through. So this is our albumin. It it cannot it cannot come through, uh, and and uh, it's not permeable. Uh, the capillaries are not permeable to the uh, albumin and proteins in general. So the uh, plasma has a high concentration of proteins and the interstitial fluid has a low concentration of proteins. And so if, if, if we inject a dye into the blood vessel and this dye attaches to, you know, the albumin in, in the blood vessel, we see that So this dye we can see that we could calculate plasma volume by if we by just using the principle of mass balance we calculate the concentration of the dye and we already know the volume uh, of injected material as well as the con its concentration in the needle and and then we measure the concentration of the dye in the plasma we will be able to calculate the volume of plasma. And then similarly, if we had uh, some smaller particle that's a lot, that can get through the plasma, but it's, it's uh, not permeable to the cell walls, then we could calculate um, the interstitial fluid. So if we had a particle, or we could calculate the extracellular fluid, excuse me. So if we had a particle that um, we inject into the plasma, and then it it flew, uh, leaked down into the interstitial fluid, so we have it in the interstitial fluid as well as in the plasma, then we could calculate the extracellular fluid, and uh, similarly, and so sodium. And inulin are small. Inulin is small, uh, or it's a it's a small substance. And sodium is a, a obviously is a, it's smaller, but it's it's relatively impermeable to the cell wall, and it's so we can calculate the extracellular fluid. Extracellular fluid, and if a if a substance leaks all the way down from the plasma, we inject it into the plasma. It leaks down and into this interstitial fluid, and then it leaks down some more. We see, and it, and it become, at equilibrium, it's throughout the body, throughout all these uh, comp compartments. The we will calculate uh, total body water. So this is this is uh, extracellular fluid, and this 
is plasma. And so what can go through all? So we, uh, this, this is a heavy, this is a deuterium oxide. It looks like water, H2O, but it's, it's a heavy, it's, it's called heavy water and also uh, another isotype of water. Uh, this will uh, this will leak through the capillaries and it'll leak into the interstitial fluid and then leak down into the intracellular fluid and to uh, disperse throughout the uh, all of the body compartment uh, fluid compartments. And so we calculate uh, by using the principle of mass balance and using the equation we just talked about. So let's talk quickly about blood volume uh, calculation. So we've already talked about how blood is really just a compartment, a fluid compartment that includes an extracellular uh, fluid, which is plasma, plus intracellular fluid, which is red blood cells. To arrive at the equation that you'll need to calculate blood volume will give a more intuitive description other than just giving you the uh, equation to memorize. So if you divide by blood, you see that one equals plasma over blood volume plus red blood cells over, this is blood, red blood cells over blood volume. So, uh, and you, you see that if if you're adding these two, then plasma plus red blood cells equals blood volume, and blood volume over blood volume is one. So it's not hard. We we just divided through the entire equation, and now we have a simple equation to uh, figure out plasma volume. So if we had if we subtracted one, uh, both sides by the fraction of red blood cells over blood volume, we have an equation that looks a little bit like this red blood cells over blood volume equals the fraction of plasma over the total blood volume. And then if we divide, if we multiply through this entire equation by blood volume, we arrive at the typical equation you see in textbooks, which is, which is uh, blood volume times one over uh, red blood cells over blood volume equals plasma, which is just a rearrangement of this simple original equation up here in textbooks I tell you to memorize and this that equation is volume of blood equals uh, equals volume of plasma over one over the hematocrit hematocrit. And that is, you can see that it's very similar. These two equations are very similar. We have blood volume, blood volume, plasma volume, plasma volume, and then this big, uh, this equation in brackets. And the hematocrit is really just the fraction of volume of red blood cells over blood volume. That's, 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 that's all the hematocrit is. Uh, is. And, and uh, it's just a fancy word for something simple. And in typical, typically, uh, we, I also wrote down a range, uh, a hematocrit range is 40 to 50 percent. So your blood volume, 50 percent of your blood volume is uh, red blood cells. And female, and females is a little less, 35 to 45 percent of your uh, blood volume is red blood cells. And Evans dye, uh, uh, as we talked about, Evans dye just, uh, it, it, it has a high affinity for serum, albumin, so therefore the albumin stays in the blood vessels and does, is not allowed to leak out. And so we see that Evans dye stays in the vasculature and when we measure the blood, uh, uh, its concentration, we can measure plasma volume. And this, this equation is just another way of uh, helping us to that end. So let's do, an, let's, do a, let's do an example. I've talked in the previous video here, We've, we've, we've discussed how plasma typically has a three liter up here in the blue, light blue is, uh, plasma is typically three liters in volume. Now, <clears throat> we want to calculate blood volume for suppose uh, for maybe a healthy, a healthy a female. So if we had, if we had a volume of, let's do a different color. 
So in this example, we have three liters of plasma volume, and uh, for a typical, maybe average female, is forty percent of as the hematocrit. So zero point four, and if we calculate this out, we see that volume of blood is really just five liters, and that's a typical blood volume.